Okay, on this section, we will be modeling with arithmetic sequences and series. Okay, so just a reminder, what do we mean by arithmetic? So arithmetic means that we have a common difference. So each of the terms in the sequence and in the series differs by a the, the same number. So let's uh, think of a, a sequence here. If we start with one, let's uh, have the common difference be three. So the next one is four, the next one would be seven, the next one would be 10. So it increases by the same number each time. That's what we mean by um, arithmetic. And by sequence, we mean we're just listing the numbers like here. On the contrary, if we have series, it's going to be the addition of all these numbers. So to be able to model or solve real world problems with arithmetic sequences and series, you'll need to have a good idea of what they are and the characteristic of sequences and series and the characteristic of um, arithmetic as opposed to geometric. Okay, and one more thing you need to remember uh, is the nth term. How do you find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? The nth term is going to be the first term plus, running out of space, but right, the bottom n minus one times d, where d is the common difference. And for the sum, it was the first term times n plus the common difference times n squared minus n over two. If you don't know where uh, we got this from, um, I've, I've explained this in a previous video. Um, this is how we derived the formula for finding the arithmetic sequence. Okay, so let's go and try and answer uh, some of the word problems concerning arithmetic sequences and series. So we have our first problem right here. All right, a certain school has 60 students. The number of students increases by seven every year. How many students will there be after 30 years? Okay, so to get a good picture of a word problem that um, concerns with sequences and series, it's always good to write out the first few terms. So this one starts off with 60 students. Right? And after one year, every year it increases by seven students. So after one year, there's going to be 67. After two years, two years, there's going to be 74. After three years, there's going to be 81. And it's asking us after 30 years, how many students will there be after 30 years? Okay, so first of all, we can know that this is arithmetic because each time the term is increasing by the same number, it's increasing by seven each time. Okay, so that's how we know that it's arithmetic and not, not geometric. So that's why it helps us, if you write out the first few terms, it helps us to identify the characteristic of this kind of sequence. And it's asking us how many students will there be after 30 years? So is it asking us for, or is this a sequence problem or is this a series problem? Okay, so remember for sequence, sequence is just concerned about each of these individual terms here. 
each of these individual terms, whereas series is concerned about adding them all together. Right. So the question is asking, how many students will there be after 30 years? It's just asking us after 30 years. It's just asking us for this number right here. It's not asking us to add up all the previous numbers. It's not asking how many total students were there over the course of the 30 years. It's just asking the number of students after 30 years. So just this year. Right. So this is a sequence problem, not a series problem. We don't need to add them all up. So that means to find the, th the 30th term, or the 30th year of this sequence, we'll have to use this problem or this uh, formula. Minus one times D. All right. So it's important which term you name as the first term. Okay, if you're going to name, if you want to name this as the first term, then this is going to be the second term. This is going to be the third term. This is going to be the fourth term. And notice the number of terms is always one more than the year, if you, if you um, number it this way, right? Then after 30 years, this is actually going to be the 31st term. Okay, so you need to be careful of how you number these. On the contrary, if you if you make this to be the first term so that the the, the term number lines up with this um, with the year, that's also okay. Except if you're gonna do this, That's going to be the 30th term. So now this one lines up nicely with the with, uh, year. The term number lines up nicely with the year. But if you're going to do this, the first term will have to be 67, not 60, because you started here. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where you start. If, um, if you're going to use the method I've marked in green here, just make sure that your first term is 67. If you're going to use the method that I've marked in purple here, um, make sure that you're finding for the 31st term, not the 30th term. Okay, so both of these answers, by the way, should or both of these um, should give you the same answer. Let's, let's try both ways, actually. So I'll start with doing the purple way. So purple way is saying that this is the first term. 60 is the first term. So A1 is going to be 60. And we're solving for the 31st term, okay? After 30 years, it's going to be the 31st term. So that's going to be 31 minus one. And D is the same, D is seven. So that's going to be the 31st term. So that is going to be 60 plus 30 times seven, which is 210, and that's going to be 270. Okay, so after 30 years, it means there's going to be 270 students. How about if I do it the green way? So if I do it the green way, it's going to be the 30th term, right? It's uh, we've lined up the n with the year, okay, 30th term, but we'll need to make the a1 into 67 because we started here. Plus 30 minus 1 times 7. Okay, that's going to be 67 plus 29 times 7. 29 times 7, that is going to be 3, 6, right? 203. So you get the same answer, 270. It's, so it doesn't really matter which one you make it as the first term um, and which one you make it as the nth term. Just make sure that it's consistent. If you make this into the first term, make sure that you're solving for the 30th term. If you're making this as the first term, make sure you're solving for the 31st term. Okay, so using the um, arithmetic sequence, we found that the answer for this question is 270. So after 30 years, there are going to be 270 students. Okay, 
Let's try another problem. All right. We have Mr. Joe who's working out by doing push-ups. On the first day, he did 10 push-ups. And every day, he does three more push-ups. How many total number of push-ups will he do if he works out for 10 days? All right. So let's again, let's start by writing the first few terms of this sequence. On, I'll just say D1. The first day, he did 10 push-ups. Then on the second day, he does um, three more push-ups every day, right? So on the second day, he's going to do 13 push-ups. On the th third day, he's going to be doing 16. On the fourth day, he's going to be doing 19. And it's asking for 10 days, so until D10, how many total number of push-ups? So this one, it's asking for the total number of push-ups. So it's not just asking us how many does he do on the 10th day, but instead it's also asking us the total number. So all of these combined. So this gives us, first of all, you know that it's arithmetic because the difference is the same. It's adding by three each time. But now we also know that it's going to be a series. We'll need to add each of the days up because it's asking for the total number of all the days combined. Okay, so let, let's rewrite the, the sum, which was the first term times n um, plus d times n squared minus n over 2. That was the formula for finding the sum of all the arithmetic sequences. Okay, and we, we can just assign the n so that it lines up with the 1 here. Okay, so n equals 1 here, n equals 2 here, n equals 3 here, and then n equals 10 here. All right, so it, it's for the 10 days. So n is going to equal 10, and the first term is also 10. That's the first term. So the sum is going to equal 10 times 10, plus the difference is 3, n squared, n is 10, so that's 100 minus 10 over 2. We have 100 plus 3 times 90 over 2. 100 plus 3 times 45. 100 plus 3 times 45 is 135. And that is going to equal 235. Okay, so this problem um, can be solved using the arithmetic series. And Mr. Joe will be doing a total. This is not, he's not doing 235 push-ups on the 10th day. The total number of push-ups that he does for all those 10 days uh, is 235. So if you add up all the, all the number of push-ups that he does for those 10 days, that is going to be 235. Okay, so this is how you can solve real-world problems with arithmetic sequences and series, my advice to you would be write out the first few, first, um, few terms, and that should give you a good idea of where you can go. Uh, and you can use these formulas, whether it be arithmetic sequence, arithmetic series, you can identify if it's a sequence or series and use the appropriate formula.